So welcome everybody. I'll uh, start off easy. Uh, the title here is Build Your Own Lab. So very, very simply, we're going to talk about what you should do in an distiller. I know uh, there are very different knowledge levels in the room, everything from uh, uh, PhDs to uh, your start own garage or whatever. So uh, I'm going to take it very, very general, and then we could peek into uh, to some of the chemistry and building your molecules uh, and doing the wavelength of whatever they're smelling on Mars and all that stuff as well. Uh, so we'll go into that. Um, it's a pleasure to uh, be able to talk to you here, obviously. Um, some of you might be confused when you see me around. Uh, it's not because of my awful Scandinavian looks, you know, me Vikings going around breeding the world. Uh, it's also because I have a couple of different companies, uh, as some of you might know. Uh, we have, or I have uh, distilleries under Spirit of M brand. Uh, we have the laboratory side, uh, we have a consultancy side, we have a uh, restaurant industry as well. So there's a little stuff going on. Uh, I just waving the flags. Uh, I have very, very good employees and friends and stuff. So uh, more or less, that's what it's all about. So first of all, I tend to want to start by actually defining the word, la word laboratory. Um, tends to hold uh, sort of a stigma to a lot of people, uh, especially us uh, colleagues. It shouldn't. Uh, a laboratory is a place where, where you do your measurements, your experiments, and your research. It does not need to be very technical, and it doesn't need to be that far advanced as long as it fills its purpose for the research. As with Archimedes, you know, the guy in the bathtub, um, simple enough. That's research. And we still talk about that. Uh, there was a guy with an apple and a crossbow or whatever. So it could be very, very simple to start out with. The most important part is that you start documenting what you're doing. You don't need to have all computers to write stuff. Have a notebook with numbered pages. If you actually do discover something that nobody else knows, that will be your end for, for doing your, uh, actually, your, your patents or whatever. Might not be a lot of patents in this room with spirits because it's easy enough to copy anyway. But do, uh, do your documentation. So uh, why should you build your own laboratory? The key to success in any endeavor is to, uh, obviously, continuously improve what you're doing, your methods, and obviously help you to design, uh, decide uh, to get to where you want to be easier, cheaper, and with the best possible results. So continue to do what you do and do it better. The reason why uh, looking into uh, the gin industry with, uh, with beef eaters or, or Bombay or, or Tangeri holding 80% of the market more or less is that they've done the same thing all over. We might all think it's boring. It's not. It's a good product. Might be McDonald's fed you up, but not more, much more. Uh, might also be that they've done the same thing again. Do the same thing again, and you'll get better yield, better money. End of the day, you'll make money. And businesses are so much more fun when you make money. <laughs> so um, first of all, what you actually should do, obviously, you probably have. You've done your SWOT analysis, haven't you? You did that with your business plan, and you forgot all about it. Same time you actually did your, your core values, all of that. Uh, any of you actually remember your core values? Your core values should be with you and all of your employees every day. Do your SWOT analysis in everything you do. Because every decision you take every day, everywhere, is all about these uh, SWOT, uh, SWOT names. So think about it. Uh, do your homework. Do your calculations. We tend to hear when we go about this, these things, where, whatever we do, and uh, obviously all of you, uh, or especially in the craft industry, everybody say, oh, I'm small, I'm local, and I'm craft. You probably heard Oliver or somebody else talk about that. Mm -hmm. Do you really want to be local, or do you want to sell to the world? Do you want to be small, or do you want to sell big? You still might want to be craft. 
I consider Maker's Market Craft, it's a very good product. It's volumes, but it's craft. So think about all these. Uh, you don't need to think outside the box. Or if you should think outside the box, define where the box is. It's hell of a work to think outside the box if you don't know where the box is. Most often it's lost in baggage claim in Dubai or somewhere else. So learn to think outside the box, but first define the box. So, and again, do your homework. Um, and obviously, again, uh, if you're going to measure something, uh, good, bad, we're going to get back to that because that's why you're all here. We're going to measure stuff, alcohols, sugars, whatever. Uh, define the scale. Uh, being American, it's a bit arbitrary. Um, rest of the world, though, uh, so you might be adopted by an European and, and start thinking about this rationally. Um, but again, do your measurements, obviously, end of the day. Um, define your scale. Uh, and this, the fun stuff. Now we're there. How many chemists in the room? Ah, uh, chemistry is the best thing. Ah, uh, nah. <laughs> we still like it, though. Um, then amongst chemists, the, there's the real chemist. That's the organic chemistry. Uh, and obviously, everybody else. Uh, anyway, what's fascinating about chemistry is from this, this is kind of like language before the Tower of Babel. You don't need to be Christian or think about any god or whatever. But if you do, uh, in, uh, in theory or in this book, they talk about Tower of Babel and you fall out of grace from God and all of a sudden we get all these languages. But still, wherever we are in the universe as we know it, we still have this language. And depending on how we put these legal pieces together, we get everything we know in the universe. Isn't that fabulous? You might still think uh, it's, it's quite, quite a number to learn. You ever meet half of them, you're already dead. So, uh, but half of them you can't take care of. Still, being in this industry, more or less, we need to consider five. We start, obviously, with the obvious ones, the carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen. If you're going to make alcohol, that's you know, uh, two carbons, an oxygen, and some hydrogen. Easy enough. Uh, then, if you want your spirit to, to taste something, you bring in nitrogen and sulfur. Sulfur, obviously, uh, anybody drunk Heineken? Yes, you know, sulfur. Uh, <laughs> uh, quite often, uh, one of the mistakes um, uh, newbies are doing is with all the wine, make, uh, wine barrels you might use. And a lot of those bring in sulfur. And sulfur, when diluted in this hydrogen form, kind of like smells like old dish rags. So beware of sulfur. And you can measure it very, very simple. Nitrogen uh, is, on the other hand, the reason why we use uh, copper in our stills, obviously. Because if we don't have copper, uh, we will get ethyl carbamate in our spirit, depending on our feedstock, obviously. But that's cancerogenic. Very, very dangerous. 